three-time Grammy nominee. Woo! I'm excited. Are you excited? Um, yes, Kelly. We we talked to you at the Diddy at the Diddy party, and um, you know you were just putting out um, tires. Yes. And now look what happened. So tell me about. I know you know. Obviously, your Twitter. You blew it up. You were excited, but tell me about the process. What it was like when you found out. Oh my God. Um, First of all, let me just say we worked our butts off this year. We literally did. Independent It's the first time that I've ever done that in my entire career. I've always been connected with a major label, and we did it differently this time. Um, so, of course, it started with the nomination for Tired last year, and then, of course, this time around, three nominations connected to the second single and the album overall. Um, I, I was chilling. I was laid back. I worked really hard last year. I had just come off the road after being out pretty much the whole year promoting the record and I didn't go to the ceremony that night I've kind of been hanging out with my kids hanging out at home and I literally chose to go to Bible study on that Wednesday night instead of going to the, the you know ceremony for the nominations and that's where I was when I found out um, my, my you know my cell phone starts and I'm like ah! you know so that was kind of cool it was actually a great moment for me um, I, I wouldn't take it back. I think I was in the right place. I don't know, <laughs> but it was it was great. And now we're here. Now we're I know here. a lot of your celebrity friends are rooting for you because I saw their tweets, like retweeting and stuff. What which of those three really would mean something? I mean, obviously all three, but is there one in particular? Um, R&B album, I think because um, it 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 celebrates the entire body of work. I mean, I wrote 109 songs preparing for this record. I had to choose 12 songs out of 109. And in that process, I honestly, I think it's easier when you have less to choose from, but to have so many songs, I loved all of the music that I'd written, but I had to find 12 songs that was gonna tell a complete story from beginning to end. So I literally had to weed through uh, and in the elimination process, and that took months, literally, to decide not just which 12, but even the order that they would play in. I really, that, that's my process. So we put a lot into making sure that when people listened, that they wouldn't want to skip one song. So um, th that would be amazing because it speaks to the entire body of work. Of course, with being here at ASCAP, and I'm a songwriter, and I was, you know, recognized as a songwriter before I even became an artist. That's special for its, you know, for its own reasons. But. Um, you know, I, I, this is nomination number five, six, and seven. So with that, um, I love everybody that I'm nominated with. Everybody is deserving. It really is anybody's award at this point um, because everybody had great projects. But I'm hoping that one out of the three. Okay, you have good odds. I'm, I'm hoping that one of those three comes home with me. So, you know, I'm kind of looking at the space on the mantle and going, you're getting a little lonely up there and you need some new company. So we'll see what happens. How do you get ready for the Grammys? What is your process like tonight, tomorrow? You know, um, I decided that rather than sweating everything, I'm just going to have a good time. I've literally decided that this year, Grammy week was going to be about having a good time. I refuse to be stressed about anything. You know, if something happens with my dress tomorrow, I will come in a pair of jeans and beat my face wonderfully. Like, that's where I'm at with it. I'm determined to just enjoy this moment. It doesn't happen often in a career, you know, three awards, three award nominations at one time. So um, I've just decided that it's easy breezy and all about having a good time this week. Do you, and do you ever feel underrated? And the reason I ask that is because when people talk about, you know, top five, top ten voices, I mean, you're up for a lot of people's lists, up there with Whitney, up there with Mariah, but sometimes it seems that you don't get that same respect. So do you feel sometimes they're underrated? Or? Well, you know what? Um, underrated, well, uh, it depends on the rating system. Um, and I've had to kind of be okay with myself and understanding who I am in, in, as a vocalist in the industry um, and even where I sit in my position as an artist. Um, the rating systems in the industry change depending on what, you know, period you're in. When I came out as an artist, people recognized who I was in terms of being a singer, and that was my moment. I, I am very, very clear. Nobody, I was number one when I came out. I hit number one. Nobody stays at number one. Michael Jackson, before he died, and even now, I think arguably the biggest artist, the greatest seller of all time, um, he didn't stay at number one. So I, it, what I advise, and I take my own lessons, and I even advise newcomers that are coming along, when you get there, relish in it, be nice to everybody, because you you won't stay there and when you're not there anymore you're gonna want them to remember you as somebody who was nice when you were there so depend it all depends on the rating system to know that other singers look at me and go eh, I want to do that 
that works for me. That works for me. Well, enjoy tonight, enjoy tomorrow, and good luck. You got to take one of those Grammys home. Oh, I'm praying real hard. One of them. Just, I, I don't want to be greedy. If I can get one of them, I'm happy. All right. Thank you, Ms. Kelly Price. Yeah, thank you very much.